I grew up in Kuantan, a small town along the east coast of peninsular Malaysia. And as a kid, I remember being very drawn to nature. I enjoyed hiking, swimming, and spent an awful lot of time like at the beach. Of course, it didn't help that my grandparents were living just 10 minutes away. I really enjoyed embracing the cold breeze and the sound of waves, which is music to my ears. But at the age of 10, I've also seen nature's rough. I've seen some of the worst flash floods that has ever hit Malaysia. I've seen how some of my closest friends have lost their homes and assets as a result of such extreme weather patterns. They were displaced, you know, they had to miss school, and also the livelihoods of fishermen in my village were all affected as a result of such extreme weather patterns. Being the curious kid that I was, I would often ask the adults around me, why is this happening so frequently, almost year on year? And the answer that I would often get from them is this, Chal, it's an act of God. There's really nothing that you can do. Being the rebel that I was, like I set forth on a journey of self-discovery and became a climate change activist today. And this is exactly what I'm protecting for, the image on the screen, the blue marble, the very first few images of Mother Earth. Isn't she beautiful? We all know, or at least some of us would know, the basic science of global warming. Solar radiation from the sun penetrates through the atmosphere in the form of infrared uh, waves. Some of these waves are re-radiated back. However, with increasing levels of greenhouse gases, what happens is some of these waves are trapped in our atmosphere, causing a phenomenon known as heat energy, which increases the temperature of Earth at an unprecedented rate. And what is the cause of this? Directly or indirectly, like mankind are responsible for increasing levels of greenhouse gas emissions, be it through our activities in transportation, forest burning, landfill, oil production, you name it. The fact of the matter is, we are seeing a steady increase in the mean temperatures of planet Earth. In fact, over the past couple of decades, temperatures have shifted clearly towards the higher end. In fact, if you look at the extreme weather patterns that have occurred, they used to occur and cover only 0.1% of planet Earth. However, that number has increased significantly by up to 14.5%, which is almost 14 times more. In fact, 16 of the 17 hottest years on record have occurred since the year 2001, and guess which was the hottest year that we have ever recorded. It took place in 2016. In fact, temperatures were so hot that roads started melting. You know, in India alone, about 2,300 people on record have died in 2015 as a result of severe heat waves. And this is a statistic that we shouldn't be proud of. You know, in Malaysia, the moment temperatures soar up to 35 degrees Celsius, a lot of us would have already you know, started complaining. But guess what? In Basra and Iraq, temperatures have actually reached 53.9 degrees Celsius. And in July 2016 in Kuwait, temperatures actually soared up to 54 degrees Celsius. Isn't that insane? You know, some of our global systems regardless of whether it's food, water, or health, they are actually very vulnerable to the impacts of climate change. Did you know, for example, that one degree Celsius of increase in temperature would lead to significant declines in our U production? Corn, wheat, rice, soy. And these are four main crops that make up about two-thirds of human caloric intake. And we know for a fact that population growth is increasing at an exponential rate. 
So we definitely have a problem. How are we going to feed the ever-increasing population? A lot of World Health organizations or institutions that are working in the health systems came together to declare that climate change is a number one threat like to our health systems. And this should not be a surprise. Climate change causes waterborne diseases through floods, such as dysentery and cholera. Hotter temperatures causes the increase of pollen levels, which leads to rise in respiratory diseases. So we are bearing the impacts, and we are paying as a result of our negligence. There is a very interesting case study which has linked the Zika virus to climate change. So there is this breed of mosquito known as Aedes, which typically goes through a metamorphosis from an egg to a larvae and then to a full-blown mosquito. This mosquito reaches maturity and will start ingesting Zika. So Zika will actually incubate in the body of these mosquitoes for a period of time. However, usually what happens is the mosquito would have died out before the incubation process is completed. Yet, with warmer temperatures, what we are seeing is that mosquitoes are actually living much longer, and now the incubation process can be completed, and this breed of mosquitoes, Aedes, are now a vector, which means that they are actually very dangerous like, to mankind. So, what is the cost of carbon? We obviously have floods and mudslides, we have wildfires, we have droughts, and ocean acid acidification, which causes coral bleaching, like especially in parts of Australia. There is water scarcity, there's ecosystem loss. You know, climate change is the number one threat to our global economy, and there's no doubt about it. It has been estimated that the cost that we are incurring is in the range of trillions of dollars. But that's not the message that I want to bring today, that it's not all doom and gloom. We know for a fact that we have to change. The question here, though, is can we change? In 2015, 2015 actually marks a sea change in the climate action movement, especially with the ratification of the Paris Agreement and COP21. We are seeing countries like stepping up the game and showing real leadership in this space. And we have definitely a lot of solutions in our hand. If we talk about green energy progress, like in the year 2000, we projected that worldwide wind capacity will reach about 30 gigawatts by 2010. Guess what? In 2016, we actually exceeded that capacity by a factor of 16 times. Solar energy, in 2002, the projection was that we would grow the solar energy market by one gigawatt per year by 2010. What was the reality? The goal was exceeded by 17 times. And in 2016, that number increased by up to 75 times, way beyond human imagination. A lot of countries have also committed and stepped up to phasing out fossil fuel vehicles we're talking about Norway, Netherlands, and even parts of Asia, like in India and China, for example, have made that declaration and commitment to phasing out fossil fuel vehicles. We see a lot of automobile companies as well stepping up to the plate. And you're talking about big names like Tesla, Audi, more than 100 auto automobile organizations are moving to actually producing electric vehicles. Organizations as well, like more than 100 global companies, have made a commitment to go 100% renewable. So they are stepping up to the plate and changing the whole game plan completely. We also see innovation, like in you know, smaller, less developed countries. This was actually you know, a case study that was done in South Sudan, like where a couple of innovators actually came in and decided to introduce a pay-as-you-go solar power. So they too are participating in this change. 
The real question that I have for you today is, will you change? You know, as a climate activist, one of the things that I do is I do travel quite a lot across uh, Malaysia to give talks to raise awareness on climate change. And one of the common questions that I typically get from the audience, or delegates especially, is this. Climate change seems to be a topic that's been debated 30,000 feet above ground. You're talking about policy makers that are involved with you know, the intergovernmental uh, IPCC reports and COP21. Can a lay person at the grassroots level actually make a change? And my answer is a resounding yes. Never underestimate the power of a few committed individuals who want to change the world. In fact, it's the only thing that ever has. You just got to believe and dig deep. Combine it with what you're really passionate about, and change will eventually come. Is it tough? You betcha. Is it going to involve a lot of sacrifices? You can bet on it. But we, but it is not impossible, but we can do this together. So I leave you with this question. Are you willing to change? Thank you.